So with cyber season and Black Friday and all the sales that will be going on at the minute, it's very easy to sort of get overwhelmed by just how many options there are. So in this video, I'm going to go through a few of my absolute favorite libraries that I think are worth taking note for when it comes to the sales this year. A few of them I picked up on Black Friday, other times I've just picked them up throughout the year, but they've become like absolute staples of my templates and play a very big part in what it is that I do. So I think the key thing to sort of talk about when it comes to choosing a library that you want to sort of go after in the sales is like, what is its purpose? What void in your sound could it fill? What sort of thing is it that you're looking for? And does this particular product take care of that for you? Never going to be sales like blind. Just just don't do it. Like I've, I've made that mistake before where you just, you, you just blow money on stuff and you really don't have to. If you have an idea of what it is that you need to sort out with your sound, then it's a hell of a lot easier to navigate through everything to find exactly what it is you're looking for. So without any further rambling, here are a few of my absolute favorite libraries that I think you should definitely take a look at this year. So first up, it's a pretty fundamental one now, Cinematic Studio Strings. So Cinematic Studio Strings is really like my go-to string library and I've been using it for about a year and a half now I would say. So Cinematic Studio Strings breaks down your string section into your various parts. So you've got first violin, second violin, viola, cello and basses. And the thing that's great about their libraries is that your key switches are universal across the library. So let's say I have a cello line going, right? and I want to build on the string sound by having maybe the violas or the second violins or something come in and double that an octave higher, or maybe the basses to double it an octave lower. I can just duplicate that clip from the cello channel into any of those instruments and maybe have to transpose it up and down 12 semitones or whatever. But apart from that, the key switches and everything are universal. So your track delays and maybe if you've you know, moved things about by like a few ticks just to get them completely locked in with your legatos and stuff. All of that will translate across each of the libraries, which is one of the biggest things that I love about it because that saves so much time. It's a very simple library to navigate. The user interface is just so simple and so sleek. And once again, it's universal across the entire library. And it's just something that you can dive into right away with little to no learning curve at all. On top of that, you have a nice variety of mic positions and the mic positions on the individual parts of your string section can actually be bossed out to the various outputs that Contact provides if you really want to dive into individual mixes of different mic positions and blending everything manually like you would on a desk. But even without diving into that, the sound of this library is just beautiful. And with the recent update that was absolutely massive, by the way, they went in and they re-edited all the samples and they did a fresh mix on it and included an extra microphone position. And that was a free update. So here's a couple of examples of cinematic studio strings. So the next one is another string library, to be fair, but it's it's a little bit different and it's another one that's just a really quick plug and play instrument. It is the Oliver Arnold's Chamber Evolutions by Spitfire Audio. So Oliver Arnold has been known for a very long time of having these really interesting sort of textural string techniques and this is what the library provides. It provides pre-recorded techniques being played by individual players at varying rates and speeds so you get more of a textural sound using things like the chamber grid or the basis grid, where you can really select the type of tonality that you're going for, whether it be something that's very subtle and sort of like concertino type sound, all the way up to something that's really aggressive and like detuned and subtle, like moving and phasing back and forth. It covers a hell of a lot of ground, but the thing that's best about it is that the library has these pre-recorded motions in the waves section. So the waves section is exactly what it says in the tin, it is waves of sound. So the string players are playing this wave motion, you know, the sound rises up and just falls down and it's just quite gentle and graceful. Your key switches will switch between various lengths, but also you have various techniques. So you've got three different techniques, you've got normal, you have vibrato and you have tremolo. Essentially what that means is that they're going to continue to play that wave of sound in terms of the dynamic, but you'll either have it just be a regular note 
or you'll have it be a vibrato note, or you'll have it be a tremolo note. And once again, with each of these things like vibrato and tremolo, the string players are playing just slightly differently because you're not going to have two string players that are playing the exact same rate of vibrato or tremolo. It's just not going to happen. So you get this beautiful, organic, almost live sounding instrument. Same applies to the basses waves. It just covers the lower end of the string section and it's the same story with the basses grid. You have all of those different options for different sounds and different textures, but it applies to the lower end of the string section. So here are a few examples of the Oliver Arnold's Chamber Evolutions by Spitfire. Okay, next up we have Gravity by Heaviosity. This one is very, very different to the, the two that I've just mentioned, but if you're sort of unsure about maybe synthesis or sound design and you want to sort of dip your toes in the water of bringing hybrid scoring into your work, this is a really good library to start with because it, it basically covers everything. So instead of like going out and buying one synth and then trying to figure out how to use it and then finding out that maybe there's like a handful of things that you were hoping to do that you can't actually do with it or you have a lot more to learn about the synth before it's something that's within your wheelhouse. This is sort of like a one-stop shop for everything contemporary scoring synthesis wise. This covers everything from pads that can be anything from really ethereal and ambient distant sounds all the way up to the super aggressive punished sounds that Heaviosity specialize in. It covers stingers and risers for all your effects and once again they can be as ethereal or as aggressive as you need them to be and it covers impacts and hits, low booms and various sort of industrial effects that can immediately just be applied to any type of scoring or trailer music or game audio, whatever it is. This is just a really good all around package for everything that you could need to get started with hybrid scoring. Now I say that talking about synthesis and talking about the hybrid side of things, there are no orchestral instruments or no sort of traditional instruments in this library. This is just a really good package to have as well as your, your orchestral instruments, which could be your, your stock sounds, or it could be your various paid libraries. But this is like one library that covers all of the other side of things. So this library is really, really good for people that maybe aren't doing an awful lot of hybrid scoring, but want to start getting into it. And rather than spending loads and loads of money and buying loads and loads of different sample packs or loads and loads of different synthesizers and plugins and VST effects, and this is just a really good one-stop shop. And I'll keep saying that because it, that is what it is. I was amazed by this. So I will note Heaviosity's Gravity is one that I got on Black Friday and the, the saving on it is generally nuts. I think you usually save something like three or four hundred dollars on it. I, I could be wrong, but their sale has already started. So feel free to go and check it out. They have loads of things that are actually, their sale is usually absolutely mad <laughs> for Black Friday. So here are a few examples of what you can do with Gravity by Heaviosity. Okay, so we've covered a couple of string sections, we've covered some hybrid stuff, and now just to finish off, we're going to talk about a couple of my favourite soloists. So first of all, we have Cine Samples, Tina Guo. So obviously when it comes to film music, if you talk about a solo cello, most people will immediately think of Tina Guo. Tina Guo is just that, that person, just that musician. The chances are, if you've heard something by Hans Zimmer, 
or the people at Remote Control, or you've played the game Journey is a really good example, you'll have heard Tina's playing. This library is a really great representation of that sound because it is actually recorded and performed by Tina. So you have a beautiful dynamic range and a fantastic legato where you can get really expressive, but you also have a nice range of different articulations and variations on the legato sound, such as the arco or the sulpon, and these are things that I would use quite frequently. They're very, very useful, especially when it comes to even the most intimate of drama sequences. But with that being said, even if you're doing something that's like this massive hybrid trailer music, this library is right at home as well. The dynamic range is huge and you have plenty to work with to really sort of dive in and customize the sound. You can have it be as wet or as dry as you want with the reverbs that are included. You have an effects section. You even have a really beautiful granular engine that features phrases performed by Tina that have then been processed using granular synthesis. And these are more things that can just be layered nicely throughout a score and they don't feel out of place. It just feels like a solo cellist that's been processed really nicely or is maybe using a pedal board or something like that. Now I have the first and second volumes I think but if you buy the complete Tino Guo Artist Series collection you also get an Arhu and an electric cello I believe. And those are two things I really like to pick up so I'm still gonna have to look at some point and see if there's an upgrade for that because especially an electric cello is like a really interesting sound to put into things. Now you will save more whenever you bundle all those together but even if you just bought either one or two you're still going to cover everything that you could need out of a solo cello. This library is gorgeous. So here's a few examples of what you can do with Cinesample's Tina Guo. Finally, we have the Jaeger solo voice by Audio Imperia, which features Marath's vocals, which you'll know from the likes of Two Steps from Hell and a whole range of different soundtracks. So this is one of the greatest solo voice libraries I've ever used. It, it, it could actually be the best that I've used. I absolutely adore this library. In fact, I, I probably use it too much, frankly, but it covers just such a nice range of things and the legato is absolutely perfect. So on the subject of legato, you have three different patches. You have M, you have A, and you have O. Now, these will have a really nice range in terms of dynamics. You can be really quiet and intimate. You can dry the signal right the way up and it still sounds like someone's actually singing. It doesn't sound like a sampled instrument at all. It's such a rich sound as well. It's it's. I couldn't believe just how well put together this this was whenever I first tried it. I remember hearing Daniel James demo it and I think his demo was on the page for it now. And I just immediately knew that this was something that I needed to get. This is the sort of pinnacle for me of a solo cinematic voice. And that's both within the sample library and within real life. Like the quality of voice here is unmatched in my opinion. So on top of your legatos you also have some sustained patches, you have some phrases and then you have a breath patch so you can insert breaths and stuff randomly to sort of give it a bit more of a sense of realism. You have all sorts of effects and processing and stuff that you can do within the library itself so you can go anywhere from the driest, closest, most intimate voice all the way up to having that larger than life epic hybrid music sound as well. This voice can carry through anything and it doesn't feel out of place. I also find that it takes very little mixing, that you're generally just doing a bit more balancing, maybe putting a bit of presence in so it just sort of cuts through a little bit more, but generally it just sits really nicely in a pocket and has its own space that it works within. So it, like it's mixed beautifully as a library and Anything that you can just sort of drop in without having to do a lot of work to is invaluable, especially whenever you're working. You need 
something that you can just set and forget and not have to worry about. It's just an old faithful. And uh, I've never had any issues with, with this library. It's just perfect every time. All right, enough gushing. Here's a few examples of the Audio Imperia Merith vocal. <laughs> So hopefully you found this video useful, hopefully it's given you a bit of maybe an idea as to the sort of areas that you're wanting to look into when it comes to the seals. Don't just buy stuff because it's on sale, okay, you'll, you'll, you'll make a mistake there because you need to remember there's no refund policy <laughs> on software and sample libraries unfortunately and there's very, there's very few that you can actually test out. So hopefully this has given you a nice sort of range of things that I personally I, I find are absolute go-tos. Um, I would say that three out of the five here I've mentioned I probably got on Black Friday. So Gravity, Tina Go and Marath, I got all of those on, on Black Friday, I think a couple of years ago. They have just become every days for me, 100%. CSS and Chamber Evos I bought off season in different parts, but uh, they're very hard for me to not mention in this because I think if anybody was able to find them for a really nice saving, you're getting a bargain. Anything less than full price on, on any of these libraries, frankly, it's, it's a bargain because they're already priced really, really nicely. But I will say that Gravity has still sticks in my mind as one of the one of the best seals that I've ever come across. Like Heaviosity really go all out whenever it comes to their Black Friday and Cyber Monday seals. So hopefully some of you found this video helpful or useful, maybe you're a bit sort of frivolous when it comes to sample libraries. Peruvian nose flute? For th <laughs> yes, I do need a Peruvian nose flute down from 700 euros to 150. Well, why didn't I think of that before? Did I? Symphonic kazoo ensemble? 69% off? Yeah. <laughs> the last symphonic kazoo ensemble you'll ever need. <laughs> Oh, yeah, people people just get roped in to buying the most ridiculous things because it was on sale. Like, no, don't. I've been guilty of it plenty of times, but hopefully this has helped somebody. And if there's anything that I've maybe missed, do you have any sort of recommendations of stuff that could be checked out? I still love a sale. And maybe there's something I didn't mention here that's one of your go-tos. Share them in the comments, let me know. Maybe you've had a really great sale experience on something you weren't entirely sure about and now it's your, your go-to every day. Let me know in the comments, I'd love to hear about them. Or the other side of it, have you bought something on Black Friday or Cyber Monday and now every time you see it, you just think, yeah, that was just burning money. Let me know in the comments, I'd also be interested to hear about that. And I've probably got plenty of stories about that as well. Too many stories about that. So that's gonna do it for this one today. Thanks for watching this one. I'll see you in the next one.